Kochi Prefecture lies on the south shore of Shikoku, one of the four main islands of Japan. Kochi is a rugged wilderness. Over 80% of its area is forested, the highest percentage of any Japanese prefecture. These rich forests yield beautiful waters, cascading in thousands of streams throughout the prefecture. The Shimanto River, located in Kochi's southwest, has been dubbed Japan's last virgin stream. Kochi is warm compared with most other Japanese prefectures. Its cherry trees and other spring flowers bloom early. Kochi Castle is in Kochi City, the prefecture's main city. First erected in the 17th century, the castle dates to the age when samurai ruled Japan. Spread out at the feet of the castle is a market selling daily goods. This market also dates to the late 17th century. Every Sunday, when some 500 stores set up shop, the marketplace rings with the sound of commerce. Fresh fruit and vegetables are sold by the very farmers who grow them. and the smiles are thrown in for free. Kochi is a maritime prefecture. The south of Kochi opens onto the Pacific Ocean, washed by the Kuroshio, a warm current. The abundant ocean is filled with a variety of fish. The constant presence of the vast ocean has an enormous effect on the spirit of the people of Kochi. On scenic Katsurahama Beach, a statue stands, symbolizing the character of Kochi's people. Ryoma Sakamoto is a hero of the creation of modern Japan, who lived in the 19th century. He's dressed casually in boots, which were not habitually worn in Japan at the time. In an era when Japan had shut itself off from the world, he wanted Japan to be open to foreign influences. The spirit of Ryoma Sakamoto lives on in the people of Kochi today. In March, an arcade opens in the city, turning it into one big party for locals and visitors alike. Kochi is like uh, uh, Latin, you know, Latin, Latin no hito. Very open. Openness to outside cultural influences and a tolerant attitude go to the heart of the Kochi character. In June 2008, a film was shot in Kochi featuring artists from Japan, the United States, and Korea. The locations were scenes of historical interest and natural beauty around the prefecture. The title of the film was the Harimaya Bridge. Romantic spot. This film features the bridge and the tale of forbidden love connected to it. The central character, an African-American, 
comes to Kochi and confronts the differences in culture he encounters and his own prejudices. No. Gradually, the tolerance and consideration of the people of Kochi pry open the character's closed mind. The director of this film, American Aaron Wolfolk, focused his film on the themes of the clash of cultures and the prejudices people hold. Wolfolk was inspired to create this film by the year he spent in Kochi as an English teacher. You know, Kochi Prefecture is very much the Inaka, you know, and I really, really love the Inaka myself. I mean, you know, I like going to the big cities and, you know, Tokyo, Osaka and, and stuff, you know. But I really love the Inaka. In fact, I prefer the Inaka, <laughs> you know. I think it's where the culture is strongest. I think the people are so very kind. And also, you know, there's a lot of beauty in these old towns and these old villages. It just make for some really fantastic locations, you know. Impressed by both the delightful scenery and the kindness of the local people, Wolfolk decided to set the story in Kochi. Even as he shot the film, Wolfolk found that the warm welcome of the people of Kochi hadn't changed. The film's message of overcoming the barriers of prejudice and cultural differences was the direct result of his experience in Kochi. Totally changed my perspective, you know, coming here and living here in a different culture, seeing how other people live, you know. And that was a big change for me, you know. And I keep coming back, I keep coming back. So this is a really, really big part of my life, you know. Since ancient times, the people of Kochi have looked across the sea, welcoming other cultures without prejudice. Accepting those foreign influences, they adapt them to their own natural surroundings and conditions, creating a living culture of their own. The result is a fascinating assortment of unique artifacts. <laughs> 